church, but we are on the countdown to church in person and virtual church, so we can't wait to see you however that happens. You know, in the science of mind, we teach that the one who complies with the teaching is able to bring greater possibilities and happier conditions into their life. So comply with the teaching. What does Ernest Holmes mean when he says, he means if you're doing the teaching, if you're practicing the teaching, you can improve the quality of your life experience. That's the promise of the teaching. Now we don't teach that you can get whatever you want because Ernest says that would clearly be disastrous. I mean, think about it. If everybody, everybody could get what they wanted, most of us would probably want things that could in some way interfere with the well-being of someone else. Possibly, maybe. You know, maybe we would step on somebody else's free will. So this is why Ernest says, we don't teach that you can get what you want. He says, you know, we know it's entirely possible though, through mental treatment, through right thought, through training our belief and holding to that thought that we can really, really influence our experience of life. We can influence our environment. We can influence the conditions that we meet on a daily basis. But the thing is, and this is the hard part, I realize we have to look away from the current conditions of what we don't want. We have to turn away from that and accept better conditions. But see, I know that turning away from the conditions we don't want you know what that's like? It's like driving down the freeway and there's an accident and you know you shouldn't slow down and you know you shouldn't look and you can't help it. You just have to. You just have to like have a little look. You have to just slow down and look a little bit. You know, that's, I think this is just what it's like. The, the looking away from conditions. Why? Why is that so hard? Because we're so fascinated by the conditions. We were integrally involved with creating those conditions. You know, but here's how we can look away. It's all based on this that we can trust that life, the principle of life itself, God, the universe, love, is for us. The universe is completely, completely for us. Life is for us. It's not that we're getting something for nothing. If we comply with the law, the law complies with us. Or maybe another way to say it very simply is what I focus on increases. What are you focusing on today? Are you focusing on all that you have lost in the last 13, 14 months? Or are you focusing on all the ways that life is going to be better for you as we fully embrace this new chapter that we are going into? See, this is the thing. You can't focus on lack and expect to have an abundant life. You can't focus on how sick you are and expect to have health. You can't focus on, oh my God, I'm so lonely. Why don't I have a loving relationship? One cancels out the other. Right? We can only experience what we can conceive. And I think that what Ernest Holmes means by that idea of what we can conceive is like, what can I really believe could take place in my life? What could I really allow in? What could I accept? What could I welcome at my current level of consciousness? See, because we all provide the mold for the creative law. Our mind, our thinking, our current level of belief is the mold for the creative law. So we all pay the price. I love this. Ernest says we all pay the price for what we receive. And we pay that price through mental and spiritual coins. So the mental coin is that we correct our thinking and we keep it corrected. We try to stay on the affirmative side of the street. You know, we look for the good and we praise it. And we are grateful people. And we're forgiving people. This is that component, right? And then the spiritual coin is that we meditate, that we pray, that we tithe, that we are of service in life. All of this is the spiritual coin. But mental and spiritual coin, we're doing the work inside ourselves, we're doing the work in our life, God is for us. We have to know that every day. When we wake up in the morning, one of the first things we should say to us, other than, you know, well, this is what most people say. People say, ugh. Good God, morning. And it should be good morning God, right? And, 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 and part of that good morning God is, I know that God is absolutely for me today. There is nothing in the mind of God, in the universal mind, there is nothing that's working against me, holding me back, limiting me, keeping me small. Oh, by the way, if anything is doing that, it would be my thinking, my history, my past, that little conversation in my head that goes, who do you think you are, and this will never work for you. Give that up. God is for us. The will of God is always, always for our greater good. Because you know, the principle is that whatever man soweth, that shall he reap. 
So we demonstrate at our ability to know. And I would ask us today, what are you knowing for yourself, for your life right now? Are you knowing that the path ahead is bright, that it's filled with love and opportunity and good experiences for you? Or are you saying, well, it was all better before COVID, it's downhill from here? Because if that's what you're saying, that will be your experience. And so I invite you today, if you are saying that second statement, that we correct that. That we say, you know, life is for me and it gets better all the time. See, it is a spiritual principle because Ernest Holmes teaches us in the textbook that principle is not bound by precedent. So this means if principle is not bound by precedent, that the past has no bearing on your future, then what this means that our life, because we are connected with the infinite mind of God, has the capacity to get better and better and better all the time. You say, wow, that, that, that's, that's a tall order. Is that really, really possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, but we demonstrate at our level to know. You know, that's just it. What, is, what, what, is, what am I knowing? Am I knowing that life is for me? Or have I collected all kinds of evidence that life is against me? Am I knowing that life is trying to prosper me? Or am I seeing all the reasons why life is trying to deplete me? Right? This, this is all in us. And I think that's a wonderful thing because if it's in us, we can do something about it. If the power, if the dominion was outside of us, we would have no hope or prayer of making anything better. And we know that we can make things better. What are we focusing on? That's what's increasing. <sighs> the highest realization we have is a recognition of the omnipresence, the allness of spirit. God is everywhere equally present. And we think, yes, but in this situation that is challenging me right now, in this situation where someone I love is not feeling well, in this situation where I'm struggling financially, can that be true? Yes, God is everywhere equally present, just awaiting our recognition. So if God is present here, it must mean that abundance is present here. And that in my mind, my human personality goes, yeah, but where is it? Where is it? If God's everywhere equally present and abundance is supposed to be here now, why can't I see it? Because first of all, I'm looking with my physical eye and I have to look with a spiritual eye. You know, I have to see it on the inside first before it shows up on the outside. I have to conceive of it. I have to believe of it in here before it can actually show up out here. Now, we've all done this, I'm sure. We have done this again and again and again, where we got a really clear picture of something. And it was really important to us, and we did not let that picture go. See, I think that's what people do, is we get the picture, the picture's good, the picture's clear, and then shiny object, you know, like my dog, squirrel, 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 you know, we forget all about it because something else just grabs at our attention. But Jesus' authority, I believe, is the result of his communion with spirit. And I think that's absolutely true for us, that our authority, you know, to demonstrate, our authority to heal, our authority to live a bigger, better, more loving life comes from our communion with spirit, just as it did for Jesus. So we have to take a little time each day. This is really the encouragement of science of mind, to take time every day to pray, to pray to meditate, to be still, to have a little bit of inner reflection, right? Because there is a law of good that is able to do anything. There is an intelligence in the universe that seeks for each and every one of us to be successful. You know, God is right where we are. Therefore, we do not have to go anywhere to find God. You know, the law of good is right where we are. We don't have to go anywhere to find the law of good. So we live, we move, we have our being in the divine spirit, in this perfect law. So I believe it responds to me, therefore I'm going to trust it. I think that you believe that it responds to you. And so now it's yours to trust it as well. See, we accept the answer to our prayer, even though we haven't experienced the answer in its fulfillment yet. Because Jesus said that when you pray believing, believe that you have and you will receive. All right, so if we pray with this attitude of, all right, I'm going to pray, but I don't think it's going to do any work. Well, okay, but you're probably not going to get much of a result from that, right? But if you pray with, and I know the law of God responds as I believe, it's done unto me as I believe, then we're going to see 
heaven and earth shift. See, because the law of nature is that if you plant a seed, then what you have to do once the seed is planted is we allow the law of good to do the rest. But we had to plant the seed. Be very, very clear. We had to plant the seed. If you were just sitting at home waiting for the universe to knock and say, hey, <laughs> we're here to produce your life, <laughs> it's probably not going to happen, OK? I'm really sorry about that. Because you know, a chicken sits on an egg until it hatches, right? And I think, well, if that egg were an idea, I kind of sit on the egg, and then I get up and move around, and then I sit on the egg again, and then I get up and do some other things, and then I forget about the egg for a couple of days. Well, that's, that's not the way <laughs> for that idea to hatch, I guess, to, to continue with my metaphor. That we have to place our faith in a relationship with this power that is so much greater than we are, and yet we are a part of it, that we put our faith in that relationship that it would make it possible for the law of good to do definite things for us. Because the law is always responding. The law I'm talking about is the basic law of consciousness, the law of karma, that what you put out is what you get back. See, I'm waiting in faith. God never lets us down. I hope that you are waiting in faith. See, because like, like even church, you know, we've had a very interesting uh, 14 months or so. And what I have to remind myself all the time is that this is God's business. And a power that's greater than I am is ultimately directing it. And I am in partnership with this power. And then I say, show me what I need to know and do today. Show me what I need to know and do today. So I want this to be God's business. I don't want this to be my business. If this is my business, it's probably not going to do very well. But if it's God's business, God has access to infinite ideas. God is infinite ideas. But will I believe? Will I be persistent in the idea? Will I trust You know the, that idea, that seed that I plant? Maybe that idea is, is I, want, I want to be completely healthy, or I want to lose some weight, or I want to have a job that I enjoy. I want to meet somebody who loves me back. You know, whatever that is. If I think my problems are too great for the divine intelligence to solve, then I'm going to be waiting a long time. But this is why I always say we have to get a bigger God. We have to have a God that we know is so big that our challenge, our difficulty, is nothing. You know, like, like God, I believe, looks at a splinter the same way God looks at a broken leg. That that infinite intelligence is like, yeah, splinter, no problem. Hey, broken leg, no problem. Anything else, no problem. See, but if I think my problems are too big for the infinite intelligence to solve, I have really put myself between such a rock and a hard place, nothing good can come of that. So Jesus used one power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to feed the multitudes, on and on and on. And so for us, I think that we have to have faith in the law of God, which is the law of good. And this also means we have to have some faith in ourselves. God is everywhere, including right where we are. So although I am not all that God is, all that I am is a part of God. Although you are not all that God is, all that you are is a part of God. And again, I remind you to take time daily to be quiet, and be an acceptance of your good, whatever that is. Look, Emma Curtis Hopkins says it like this, and you know she is one of my main teachers, the American mystic Emma Curtis Hopkins. She says, there is good for me and I ought to have it. Now, if God has created good for you and your name is on it, shouldn't you have it? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have to take time daily in quiet to just be an acceptance you know, when we're meditating, when we're praying, have this kind of accepting attitude. And you know, and I know it's a challenge for people to give thanks for what they cannot see yet. But you know, one of the highest forms of prayer is to give thanks before receiving, right? So daily, we want to give thanks for what we cannot see yet. And daily, believe that, that a way is being opened before me. I don't need to know all of the details. That's God's business. I think we all have faith. It's born in us, but we may not be using it right now as much as we could be. So let's take a definite idea this week. One definite idea. 
I would like to have healing in my body. I would like to find my right and perfect work. I would like to find a place to live. I would like to have the right and perfect love relationship. Whatever that may be for you. First of all, know that God has no judgment on any of that. You know that the way God is trying to grow us, I believe, is through our own individual desires. That's how our consciousness gets expanded and stretched and we experience more of God. Right? So daily, we give thanks for what we cannot see and believe that a way is being opened up for us. So you take a definite idea this week, I'm taking a definite idea, and we're going to stay with it in complete acceptance. That's all I want you to do this week is just be in complete acceptance of our good, whatever that is. You know, I don't, you don't have to tell me. You just be in acceptance of it. Because it says in the Bible, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So the universe only knows to give of itself. God is not withholding from us in any way. So let's take all of our wants, all of our needs to that divine source, right? And know that that alone will meet them and that it does, in fact, meet them every time. So I invite you to turn your attention inward with me now. We'll do a little bit of inner work before we go into the treatment. So we turn our attention inward, bringing our awareness to the pattern of our breathing. Just notice that you're breathing in and breathing out. And with each breath, let the area of your heart become fuller and richer and deeper. Now there is a power greater than we are and it is a power that we can use. And I know that our affirmative prayer believes in its own answer. Like the master teacher Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And so I have in mind for us today, I declare for each of us that we have an attitude of complete acceptance of all that God has in store for us. We do not resist our good. We do not deflect it or sabotage it in any way. We don't deny it. We just accept the great good that God has in store for each and every one of us. And by the way, we've planted the seeds of that good. So we accept this idea of a greater good. There is nothing in us to contradict it. And we know that with the wisdom of spirit within us, if there's anything that we ought to do about it, we are guided and spirit impresses upon our mind what action we should take. I claim for each and every one of us a complete sense of ease and assurance that we look forward joyfully. And so remembering not only our own oneness with God, but that we are connected with all beings everywhere on the unseen side of life, I speak this word that we move forward in life knowing our oneness, knowing that all people are one with God. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we say God is right there. Spirit, love, the infinite intelligence of the entire universe is right where they are. And all is well. We know that their needs are met, that they are loved, that they are sustained by the presence of spirit within them. And we let this prayer that we speak now, this consciousness of our connection with infinite spirit, we let this consciousness enfold the entire earth, touching all people everywhere, no one left out. And we recognize that spark of God's light and love in all beings. Whether they recognize it or not, we affirm it's there. It's the truth about them. It cannot be absent. So we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is an upliftment in consciousness, that the healing we seek is at hand and we accept it fully and completely. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law and so it is, together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so
All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.